Hello everyone, I'm Becky Goldsmith with Piece of Cake and my new book, Birds in Toyland, has just gotten here. And when I say my new book, you'll notice when you get it, it says with Linda Jenkins, because I don't want to forget, Linda Jenkins is my retired partner in Piece of Cake and the birds in Toyland were her idea. So shout out to Linda and now let me quick move the camera so I can show you what's inside the book. Let's start with the book's cover. You won't know it because it doesn't say so in the book, but that is my small Christmas tree right there. I took this picture. I'm kind of proud of that. Uh, on the back, you can see some of the projects that are inside. This blue quilt is the one Linda made. It's really wonderful. So as you come inside, see, look, there's Linda's quilt again. Linda made one quilt one big quilt. Hers is on dark backgrounds. I made two quilts on light backgrounds. And then Linda also made several smaller projects inside the book. So here you can see it split. Now this is important because inside the instructions you will find that the cutting instructions and uh, yardage instructions are separated for light background and dark backgrounds because to be absolutely honest we couldn't just say okay make everything that's light dark or everything that's dark light inside the instructions that was too confusing for us so we figured we wouldn't do that to you either uh, there's all kinds of really good information in here about how to use the patterns, templates, overlays, fabric prep, the importance of using a design wall, the light background instructions, dark background instructions, and then basic hand applique instructions. And this is instructions for hand applique. You are more than welcome to do uh, machine applique if you like. No problem, if you do want to do that, use the technique that suits you best. So there's needle turn instructions, and then more on placement, and how to do off the block construction. There's kind of a lot of that. Now what that means is, when you've got layered applique shapes, and the layer on top ends at the edge of the applique shape, that's one that's better to construct off the block and then applique it down than it is to applique piece number one and then piece number two on top of it because what are you going to do with that seam allowance at the edge? There's cutaway applique, there's invisible points and outer points and inner points and curves and all kinds of good needle turn instructions. And then there's wool applique instructions. And there is some fusible instruction that goes with the wool because Linda and I both like to fuse the shapes down with soft fuse. We're really particular about the kind of fusible web we use, but we like to fuse the wool shapes down before sewing so that they don't move around as much. It helps to stabilize the outer edge of the applique. Uh, there's more instructions about when wool frays, and then there's embellishments. There is a little bit of embroidery that you will want to do for bird legs and that sorts of thing. And I've included those instructions here for the stem stitch and the back stitch and couching because you may want to do some couching. Now you can add a whole lot more embroidery to your blocks if you want to. I didn't. Linda didn't. Embroidery is not what we do so much of, but you sure can. Uh, and then there's about embellishments because you want to add hard embellishments after the quilt is quilted and bound. There are pictures of the applique blocks, the quilt that I made that's primarily wool applique, the quilt that I made on the light backgrounds that is more needle turn applique with some wool, and then the blocks Linda made on dark, because it's because they're so cute, it's important to have them in. And she did more needle turn than wool, but she did use a little bit of wool as well. So there's all the individual block pictures. 
so many block pictures and then the border pictures and then how to put the quilt together, how to document. There is a gallery of quilts. Some of these were made by Linda, but they were also made by other quilters. And it's really fun to see how different individuals thought about using the blocks and setting them together. There's also a bonus project. This project is not in the book, but there is a link on page 11 to the downloads here where you can download this pattern. And then there's more. And if you look close, you will find some really cool details, changes that different people made, different ways to set it together. It's really nice. All right, and then you get into the applique patterns. And each one is printed on a page. In the instructions, you'll find that you can make the blocks at 8 inches or 10 inches. I could go back and find that, but I'm not going to. But neither of those sizes fit on a page in a printable fashion. So these blocks are printed at a slightly reduced size. And each one tells you how much to enlarge the block to take it and print it either to make an 8-inch block or a 10-inch block. But I and my editor thought it would be really nice if we added the blocks in a downloadable format at the 8-inch or 10-inch uh, size. So there is also a link in the book that you can find if instead of going to a copy machine to blow these up, you would just as soon download them at the correct size. That's, it's in the book. You can get to it. Now, do know that paper is eight and a half inches wide. So the 10 inch blocks are going to print out on two pieces of paper that need to be uh, trimmed and then taped together. But you're used to that. Uh, so many of us have been doing downloadable patterns that that's, that's okay. Um, and there's a nice chart at the back for those of you who purchase fabric by the meter. That's very nice. And here's information about the author. That would be me. And if you look close, you'll see my husband, Steve, when he was basting my quilt for me before I took it to my Q20 and quilted it. So there you have it. This is Birds in Toyland. I really hope you enjoy the book. I appreciate you listening to me tell you about it, and may you have many happy stitches. Thanks for watching.